Word! All the way up. <laughs> you know how I feel about dogs, right? Well, watch this video. Sir, do you have any idea how super cool you are? Yeah. Thanks. I have a picture of you for above my bed, please? It's a super cool picture. Super cool. Here's your picture back. I don't deserve it. Also, a short poem I wrote about you. So super cool. If only everyone saw you the way your dog does. Yeah, you're a good boy. What I'm going to read you <laughs> is a comment that I left on this uh, YouTube video, followed by an hilarious series of responses that came about two years later than that comment. But hey, this, this is dog people we're talking about. You can't expect them to have a reaction speed of a fast-moving tectonic plate. Enter Dr. Random Ocam. Your dog thinks you're super cool because you are its only source of food and company. What if everyone acted like a dog who didn't know you? That's right, the streets would be littered with psychopathic rapist cannibals. If your best friend is a dog, please get help. You are dangerous. <laughs> Needless to say, this comment has, has received too many negative votes. And nevertheless, enter the albino black person. All right. Someone didn't get a puppy for Christmas all those years ago. You may instinctively blame your problems on your parents and how much they fail to spoil you, but I gather my opinions from representative data. I am a male man. I've met more dogs than you. To repeat, that's not bias, that's applied data. I came into this life wanting to like dogs, but the data says they're assholes. If you like dogs because the ones you cage, enslave, and brainwash happen to be nice to you, that is bias on your part. Especially when those dogs are obvious dicks to everyone else. It was a joke, dude. No need to go ass psychologist on me or tell me a life story. Dogs have feelings too. They do care about their owners. They don't care about anyone except their owners because they're broken animals. And by the way, I know it was a joke, but the format the joke took was an ass psychologist stab at my life story. I do this all the time. I hold up a mirror to see what you do. So many people start obliviously arguing with themselves with their past self from one comment ago. And I'm there with the mirror pulling at the strings going, why are you this stupid in public? You're probably all right. I've, I've got no hate for you, but dogs suck. I'll defend that contention with everything I've got. Damn, you got some issues, dude. You got all that from one comment, which I didn't even mean. You're up. You've obviously never experienced or felt the love of your very own dogs before. Just because you were a mailman and they barked at you or snapped or whatever doesn't mean dogs suck. Have fun hating on one of the most loving animals your whole life. Yes, I got all that out of one comment. I'm good at reading humans because I am one. You, however, haven't taken in a blind word I've said. Here comes the mirror again. You ready? You've obviously never felt the hate of other people's dogs. <laughs> Just because you own an animal doesn't mean it loves you. It means you've crushed its independent spirit. Have fun not understanding confirmation bias. Or your own species. Or your own head. Or the difference between love and slavery. No response as of yet from the Abino black person. Enter. J Digital 1337. You're old. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm sure the dog would rather be out there fighting for its survival and sleeping in the dirt. Screw that carpet, air conditioning, regular meals, loving people to socialize with. Find a real crusade to waste your time on. Pl plenty of them out there. That's not love. That's shelter. It's what they give slaves so they don't die in service. It's also what slaves build for their masters. Love, as far as I know, is something you have for someone, regardless of what they do for you. It doesn't involve a leash. Dogs don't understand human socialization. They don't know what a friend is. They only know what alphas and betas are. They can't adjust 
to human hierarchies, so inevitably you adjust to theirs. I think that's a habit worth opposing. Enter Faz 1991. Um, Dogs over the years have built an understanding of humans. They have been shown countless times to understand human emotions and basic communication. This is because humans relied on dogs to do things that they themselves couldn't do. The constant interaction between man and dog has turned into a facu facultative symbiotic relationship over thousands of years. They used to be wild dogs, wolves, but thousands of years later they are now a crucial part of human society and we are part of theirs. None of that refutes what I just said. Some of it even confirms it. Humans relied on dogs to teach them how to operate slaves. This may have been what set off the agricultural revolution. But it's frankly laughable at this point to call them crucial to anything. Once upon a time, religion may have been helpful in holding families together, in guiding the frightened through the darkness, but what about now? Now that we're not cave people anymore, why the fuck are we keeping the teddy bears? Enter mugged by a seagull. <laughs> Sounds Welsh. Whoa, whoa, it has always been my understanding that in the way back of when of an evolutionary timeline, dogs followed primitive man around eating his poop. The reason was because cause dogs could digest things twice, unlike us, and we were very successful hunters with an iron-rich diet. We eventually domesticated the dogs, following us around to act as watchdogs and early warning systems. We've had a relationship with dogs since the tribal days. We're talking before the Bible, let alone the slave trade. Yeah, I'm having trouble finding a part of that statement that disagrees with what I said. <laughs> Except, whoa, whoa. Oh, wait, do you think the Bible is older than slavery? isn't. The slave trade is at least as old as, as I believe I implied, the agricultural revolution. We are in fact talking Paleolithic. First came dogs, then came slavery, then came agriculture. I'm not saying post hoc ergo propter hoc, I'm just saying post hoc. Savvy? Whoa! I quite like your idea of saying whoa randomly. <laughs> no response as of yet from Mugged by a Seagull. Where was I? Faz. If Eskimos didn't have huskies, they'd be as good as dead. The dogs didn't need them, but now they are built into that family over such a long period of time. I agree with the leash point you made, but what have selves got to do with dogs and humans having a mutualistic relationship? You're serious. Dogs drag humans across hundreds of miles of icy wasteland despite not needing them. And you've no idea what that has to do with slavery. What's the human using to encourage the dogs? What piece of apparatus? What piece of apparatus is the human used to prevent the dogs from running away? You're not going to get it, are you? It's whips and chains, Faz. Whips and chains. For fuck's sake, people. Think. Think before you open whatever part of your spirit animal is replacing your face. Of course, if you're literally wondering what salves have to do with it, you don't want to know. I've been up there, and you've no idea. You're right in the long spot, but they never whip the dogs. The dogs take them to the parts where the ice is thin. They fish, and then they take them home. After thousands of years, they've been domesticated. The breeds of, of domesticated dog don't survive well outside of human care. The way they look after the animals is almost like a child. Only difference is that they work to drag them small distances for f food spots. They use motor vehicles for transport mainly. <coughs> You're still describing slaves. And I'm not denying canine slavery has saved and preserved people's lives, just like historically human slaves, usually born from long unbroken slave lineage, i.e. they've been domesticated over thousands of years, helped save and preserve the lives of their slave owners. And most of them, if you ask them, would indeed say, I love my master for giving me an identity and a home. But that changes nothing. It only reveals the sinister psychological nature of slavery. No response as of yet from Faz 1991. Digital again. Fair point, if not a bit dramatic with the slavery comparison, which kind of cheapens the overall point, but I do see what you're trying to say. But I would ask, 
You do realize that if it wasn't for humans keeping dogs as pets, then dogs wouldn't really exist at this point. Well, certainly not in the form we know them. Maybe we should leave the choice up to the dogs. As far as leashes and such. I don't know, I don't know about you, but I really haven't seen many dogs that legitimately want to escape. My point stands. Slaves rarely want to escape. It's not just their bodies in slaves. It's their minds. It's not as bad as it is for cows, for instance, whose wild ancestor, the aurochs, is now extinct, unlikely to ever return. The ancestors of dogs are still here, wolves, jackals, etc. I'm not saying kill all dogs. I'm just saying stop breeding them until there are two left of every breed. Then put them all in a museum and say, look at what the fuck we did to wolves. Wasn't that mental while it lasted? No response as of yet from J Digital 1337. I've left this next one till last because this is the most interesting. I'll tell you why later. Enter maggot tyke. You obviously don't understand dogs. Some people have an affinity, some don't. They are a pack animal. Anyone not of their tribe is suspicious. If you don't trust them, they do pick up on it. They are very good at picking out, picking out assholes. Don't pretend to know about a subject you are scared of. Some dogs do need to be treated with caution, but you have to build a trust with them. You will be at the bottom of the hierarchy with them. Learn your place and they will treat you better. I've heard dogs can smell human fear, but human trust... Not only can they read human emotions, but human thoughts? You're right, I really don't understand dogs. I didn't realise they were fucking X-Men. It all makes sense now. When dogs act like assholes around me when I've done nothing wrong, it's not because they're assholes. I mean, duh! It's because I'm an asshole and they're reading my mind. Thanks for the paraneurological insight you're totally not pretending to know about. Signed, higher primate. It's a well-observed thing about animals. They can often sense things that we higher primates cannot. Dogs are well known for their ability to detect slight sense or pheromones that are given off by other animals. The way a dog behaves around certain people can clue you in if you look for the signs. If there is a pheromone associated, is there a pheromone associated with a twisted mind? Given that we're basically one big chemical factory, that is a distinct possibility. Run along now and peel your banana. Signed, Mighty Muddly. <coughs> <coughs> Are you genuinely standing by that? When a pit bull grabs a passing three-year-old girl, bites her limbs off and rips her organs out, it's because the girl was thinking like an asshole. Because the pit bulls could sense a twisted pheromone coming from her brain through her skull. Ruff, ruff, ruff me, that kid's got a lot of emotional baggage. It's like she's asking to be mauled to death. Or is it perhaps maybe possibly a little tiny bit the dog's fault? It's do or die time. Are we going full retard or what? Some dogs need to be treated with caution. Now you're behaving like a moron. There are some breeds of dogs bred for aggression and, and if mishandled or allowed to interact with children can be quite nasty. I personally don't like pit bulls as they are unpredictable, but any dog that has been mistreated or mishandled can be dangerous, just like humans. A well cared for and socialized dog is going to be protective. It depends on the traits bred for. There is more than one factor. Signed, Snarl Grr. Caution is mistrust, dude. <laughs> Same thing. So your advice is they attack if they sense caution in you. So treat them with caution. We are definitely going full tard. No, not any dog can be dangerous. A King Charles Spaniel is not dangerous no matter how much has been abused. But a Rottweiler who is loved like a family member is still an irresponsibly dangerous thing to have around. In fact, the spoiled ones are the most dangerously self-entitled and bad-tempered, just like... Humans. Bad dog. I do not accept your definition of caution and its blanket use. Whenever I approach a strange dog, there is always caution and minor interaction before giving it a pat. People unfamiliar with dogs should not approach strange dogs. A King Charles Spaniel can still give a nasty bite. Don't assume small is safe. Respect when dealing with dogs is a lesson not enough people learn. I've not come across a bad-tempered Roddy. Guard dog. Huskies are hit and miss. Cats are fickle. Signed, Bone Muncher. Oh, don't you? 
Well, I don't accept your claim that dogs can telepathically tell the difference between caution and mistrust, then decide it's worth murdering over. That's what landed you in this puddle of stupid in the first place, still unable to get up. You're right, all breeds are potentially dangerous. It's a dangerous species, let's face it. Oh, but Rottweilers aren't! Because you've never met a bad-tempered one. Cats are fickle? You're a barnstorming thundertard. You dream of being fickle. I never mentioned telepathy. You did. The signals picked up by dogs relate to said, not mind reading. I've not come across a bad-tempered Roddy. Doesn't mean there aren't any. Any large breed of dog can be dangerous. Doesn't mean that most are. Face it, you're the inconsistent one. Redefining words, straw manning my points, and you think I'm in a puddle. Anyone reading these comments will see it. Here's a hint. Stop claiming you win all the time. It just makes you look silly. Oh, I see they can smell mistrust. It's an emotion completely different from caution. Right, so when you're approaching a dog in an ordinary degree of caution, you give off no suspicious scent. But the moment you decide privately in your own brain that the caution might be justified, you give off a chemical that makes dogs suddenly want to kill you. I called you stupid, not inconsistent. And I didn't say you are a puddle, poor little fella. You're in a puddle, but your head just won't stay down. Yeah, I misread that. Bit embarrassing. What I should have said there was, it's called a metaphor. You can see why I was thrown off. I do believe I said twisted mind. You are the one conflating terms here. I suggest you learn to dictionary. You won't find caution to be synonymous with mistrust. Caution is about assessing and proceeding with care, usually associated with unknown variables. Mistrust has a set of known parameters that are associated with suspicion. As for keeping heads down, yours is certainly associated with a lowly status if your words are anything to judge by. By the way, you learn some reading and comprehension. Bitch, I just got done telling you the difference between caution and mistrust. The internal justification. My point is dogs can't tell the difference. Even a fellow human being can't reliably decipher it on sensory data alone. Why the fuck do you think dogs can read people better than people can? Because you prefer dogs to your own species. Is that about right? That's why you're stupid. You get as far as dog thoughts and then you stop drilling. You're my puppet now, you realise that, don't you? First you tell me caution is mistrust, now you're claiming it is an emotive state rather than a rational response. A person intent on harm has, is a twisted mind. The biochemistry of the brain is a, in a particular state is controlled by chemicals. Dogs are sensitive to chemical differences, that's why there is research into cancer-sniffing dogs. Chemical markers. Hostility is emotive. Emotions are chemically derived. What's the, what's the chemical marker? Dogs know. Fear is also chemically derived emotion. Dumb hat. Cancer is biological material. If the tumor's big enough, you can smell it yourself. But you suggested the reason dogs are murderous around me, like when I'm mailing, is because they can smell my sense of mistrust through the brickwork, but not your sense of caution from inches away. Well, it was just you saying, dogs are never assholes, only you are. You have gone round every fucking house in the Lower East Side area trying to cover this snarky little spit glob with pseudo-intellectual bullshit. No response, as of yet, from Maggot Tyke. Weirdly, I've since seen Maggot Tyke conversing in comment sections with the folks at Men's Rights Edmonton and surrounding chapters. That's probably how he discovered my comment. You might be watching this, hi. It's bizarre. Some atheists... Right? Like in my last video. You talk to them and they completely understand perfectly how to sceptically scrutinise religion. They know all the tricks. They know all the traps. They can spot them a mile off. But then you bring up feminism and it's like a key that unlocks a hatch at the back of their brain and everything just falls out. And they start using the very same tricks and traps that moments ago they were laser focused on rebutting. Excuses. Derailings. Sound bites, personal attacks, and all manner of logical fallacies which they proudly happen to know the names of. And then you talk to anti feminists, and they understand perfectly how to skeptically scrutinize feminism, etc. You think you finally found someone who gets it, and then you bring up dogs. <laughs> Is there anyone out there? 
who isn't a fucking slave. <sighs> this is the trifecta, people. Religion, feminism, and the dog cult. These are the causes of, and the invigilating prefects of, slavery. When God fucks up, it's man's fault. When women fuck up, it's men's fault. And when dogs fuck up the postman, it's the fucking postman's fault. In fact, when God, women or dogs fuck anything up, it is the fault of whichever fucking organism got in their way. If you have any patience at all for any of these three brain hacks, these three abominations against nature, you will never free yourself from your mind-forged manacles. Now, it might be a coincidence that all three of these could be described as dogma. And it might be indeed be a coincidence that dog is God backwards. And together, this sort of book-ending feminism. But that's a, an image you can take hold of, right? <coughs> it's like a hot dog of worship being shoved into you from birth. God, women, dog. It'd be, it'd be a palindrome if women backwards wasn't Nemo, which is, of course, Latin for no one, because there's no W in Latin. It's difficult not to go a little bit tinfoil hat sometimes, but just understand, right? Just try to take these three little truths on board. God is not necessarily better than reality. Women are not necessarily better than men. And dogs are not necessarily better than humans. Quite why that last one would be anyone's final sticking point. Speaks volumes to what a fucked up self-hating species we are. Maybe every species hates itself. Who knows? Just we're the only ones that can articulate it against this backdrop of survival instinct. Fuck it. Shoot them all, let God sort them out. Oh wait, shit. I guess the role of God will be played this evening by his understudy. Click clack. Goodbye and fuck off.